right, folks. You got me and Eddie out here again. Another march we didn't know about today. It's a Father's Day march, or Father's Day uh, plus Black Lives Matter protest. So here we are out here marching, walking again. So check it out, folks. Here we are, folks. At the Father's Day slash Black Lives Matter slash protest on Sunday here in Middletown. Good stuff, positive stuff, bro. Got the Channel 3 news guy right there in the Pika Black shirt. Black Lives Matter! In the Pika shirt. So you got Channel 3 news here. Black Lives Matter! Come on now. Yep, yeah, that's pretty cool. Channel 3 News decided to come down and check this out. That's pretty cool. Oh, you gotta get all of us, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I've been, I've been, I've been doing it. And we on our way to the South Green here, which is the same place that they had the rally on, uh, on Juneteenth. So it looks like we're pretty much going to the same place today. So I'll turn it back on when we get there, folks. much time out here so here's Henry Duncan here we go y'all so let me jump right into it right now we in the year 2020 and the biggest thing about 2020 is we talk about that as being perfect vision so my question to you black America how do you see yourself how do you see each other as you look around at each other? How do you see each other? How do you see your community? These are the questions that we have to answer before we move forward. Is America, not, I'm talking about racist America. I'm not talking about the values of America. I'm talking about the racist society of America have taught us a lot. We've been told throughout history that we came here as slaves. Not realizing that when we came here, we were not slaves, we were turned into slaves when we got here. You were engineers, you were doctors, architects, teachers, scholars, princes, kings, queens. You lost your identity when you came to this country. America didn't give us a sense of civilization. We already had a sense of civilization. We were civilized before we got here, and we're still civilized. The problem is we've been lied to. The problem is we've been taught something different than what we originated as. Our young people have been taught they've been, that they're thugs, they're criminals. If you walk around with that mindset, you're going to be stuck in that mindset for Amen. the rest of your life. Amen. It all starts with vision. How do you see yourself today? Are you going to listen to the lies of the past? Our public schools didn't teach us true black history. It's up to us as black men, black women, black, black mothers, black fathers, to teach our kids the true history of black. We were taught lies. And I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about the, the racist, so-called Americans. And the reason why I use that term so-called, because all the values that they stand upon, the teach, excuse me, the hate that they teach, it's not American values, but it's racist values. And our Constitution doesn't support those values. Our Constitution supports the exact opposite. So if anyone is an illegal, an illegal immigrant in this country, it's the racist. So we need to build a wall to keep them the hell out of here. So if you want to build a wall, Mr. Trump, that's the, that's the wall you need to build. You don't build enough wall. Perfect vision. Never seen, Twenty never seen a man divide a country so bad. One of the biggest crimes in America today, and we know is identity theft. Our identity has been stolen from us. It's up to you and I to get it back. If someone can steal your identity, they can steal your life. Once they steal your life, you're dead. You're walking around breathing, but you have no true life. Your identity has been stolen. Let her win it's time to get, get it back. Away. You're running the wall out there. Our generations have been flooded. 
with lies. <laughs> Racist America has flooded their kids with lies. Yep. They taught them to hate blacks. Yep. They taught them to discriminate against blacks for no good reason at all. No good reason at all. They've been taught hate. And throughout generations and generations and upon generations and more generations, that hate oh, has flooded into our White House. So that hate flooded into Congress. That, so hate, that hate flooded into our judicial system. That hate flooded into our law enforcement system. That's the problem. That generational hate that has been taught. So how do we get it back? Your voice. Your voice needs to be heard. There is a system that's designed to keep your voice quiet. There's a system that's designed to keep you silent. And if they can silence you, you can't make an impact. Our young black men and young black women, as long as you allow them to criminalize you, as long as you allow them to teach that lie to you, you're going to become a felon. And once you become a felon, you can't vote, so now you're quiet. So what other option do you have? What's your next option? To loot, to riot, because now that's your only voice. And that voice does no good. Your only voice that's gonna make a difference is your vote, excuse me, your voice to vote. We clean up our society by cleaning up the White House. We clean up our society by cleaning up the judicial system. We clean up our society by cleaning up the law enforcement system. That's how we clean it up. For too long, we've been seen in the wrong light. And I believe it's now time that we open our eyes. I was told long ago, and I don't know how true it is because I didn't really research it out, but for the sake of the analogy, because I like the analogy. And if you listen, it might make sense to you. I was told that the way that they train an elephant is they take that elephant when it's a baby and they stick a peg in the ground and they tie that elephant to that peg. So when that elephant is little, they tell that elephant, you can't move. And every time that elephant tries to move, they whip it back into shape. They whip it back into place. So as that elephant begins to grow and grow and become bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger, his mindset is still the little elephant. He can't see himself any better than when he was a little elephant. He was taught the vision of someone that wanted to oppress him and keep him down. And that's all that elephant saw for the rest of his life. So as that elephant began to grow, you and I know because common sense tells us that that elephant is now big enough and strong enough to pull that peg out of the ground and stop on his oppressor. That's right knowledge, brother. But without him seeing it, without him knowing it, without that thought process being in his mind, in his heart, he's always going to believe the lie of his oppressor. Right knowledge. So what do we and I do? We educate. We educate ourselves first. I wasn't taught this at McDonough Public School. I wasn't taught this at St. John's Catholic School where we came from. I wasn't taught this at Kegwin. I wasn't taught this at Wilson. I wasn't taught this at Vinyl Tech. So I got to educate myself. The internet, they say, is a powerful thing. Google anything you want to know, but be careful because somebody's still going to try to lie to you through the internet. You have to be diligent in your research. You have to make sure and research your research. Study. The Bible tells me to study to make to show myself approved. Righteously dividing the word of truth. So I have to be diligent in studying things so I can rightfully divide the word. Black people, I'm going to tell you right now. We've been crying too long. We're the only ones in America that's waiting to die before we go to heaven. I, as a Christian believer, if I believe the Lord's Prayer, there's a part in the Lord's Prayer where he says, Thy will be done on earth, on earth, as it is in heaven. So heaven on earth belongs to me right here today. 
right here today in 2020. I deserve heaven on earth. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up, I'm gonna wrap it up. I know my man Double K got some things to say, but I'm gonna leave you with one more thing. One more thing. There's a young brother that's flooded the internet right now. The brother can sing. He got to be like 15 years old. And I know you see. The brother said, I just want to live. That's what he said. That said, that's what he said. I just want to live. But I'm going to tell you right now, you deserve more than just to live. You deserve the pursuit of happiness. That belongs to you and that belongs to me. Don't settle for just living. You want life. And the Bible tells me that Jesus Christ came to give me life and a life more abundant. I'm a Christian. That's what I believe. And I like that because I want that kind of life. I want that prosperous life. I want a life where I can pursue happiness for my wife, for my kids, my grandkids, for my community. Amen. We've been doing the flood. We've been enduring the flood for generations. But a shame on us, shame on me, because we've been living our own little lives in our own little bubble, busy getting turned up, busy doing other things, and not realizing that there's a flood on the outside. That's right. A flood of racism, a flood of hate. That's right. But because we were comfortable in our little, little corner of America, it didn't hit us. Trayvon Martin could have been my son Trayvon Duff. That's right. But because it didn't hit Middletown Connecticut. That's right. It didn't hit Meriden, Connecticut. That's right. It didn't hit Waterbury, Connecticut. That's right. Yeah. We were comfortable being turned up. Come on now. If you're spending two or more money getting turned up than you are setting aside a savings account for your kids, you got a problem. That's right. You got a problem. If you spend more money on Hennessy than you do on your kids' college education, you got a problem. But because you've been fed that lie for so many years, young people see yourself better than to believe the lies that these so-called rappers are telling you right now. If you see yourself as a king, come on. If you see yourself as a prince, come on. You will not settle for being a player. That's right, brother. You will not settle for being a gang member. That's right, brother. You will not settle for being a drug dealer. That's right, brother. Therefore, the racist, the racist judicial system will have no bounds on your life because you can't fuck you up. You can't challenge your voice. Because now, come on, now you've understood your authority. Now you have, have understood, have an understanding of your, of your identity. Get involved. If you think, it's an African proverb that says, if you think that you're just too small to make a difference, I dare you to lock yourself in a room with a mosquito. <laughs> that mosquito gonna tear you up. He gonna tear you up. Especially if the lights are, you ain't gonna see where he at. He gonna eat you alive. He gonna make a difference on your big mind. So I'm gonna tell you this: whatever this, whatever investment you can make today, whatever investment you can make today, if it's a top, if it's a ten dollar investment, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about of your time. I'm talking about of your energy. That $10 investment of your time and your energy can turn out to make a million dollar profit in your community. Go to city council meetings, go to board of education meetings. Make your voice heard. Make your voice heard. Do not continue to allow them to silence your voice. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. So while I was in prison, I took advantage of all those different programs that were available for me because I wanted to be the man, the father that my daughter could look up to and be proud of. Because my daughter, she see me intoxicated in these streets here in Middletown. She see me physically and verbally abusive to her mother. She see me doing all types of criminal activity. She seen all that. So I wanted to be that man that she could look up to and be proud of. So I took advantage of all those programs. 
and that program that really helped me the most with that drug treatment program because I was, I was able to see why I was using these drugs. It might sound fun, it might start off fun and having a good time, but it was the root cause of why I was using it. It was the trauma, it was the unprocessed pain, and as black men, we taught not to talk about our emotions and our feelings. We talk about to suppress those emotions. But if you don't talk about it, if you don't let those emotions out, it will come out in an ugly way. So therefore, we must take care of ourselves holistically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, as well as physically. And the name of this poem that I wrote while I was in, this, in the program in prison is called Eyes of a Silent Sun. Look into my eyes and tell me what you see. Is it a lost soul with no control, trying to be free? As I look into the mirror and stare into my eyes, I see all the anger and self-hate, hypocrisy and lies. I see resentment, frustration, embarrassment and pain. I see jail bars and fancy cars as I cruise down memory lane. I see the feelings I repress going back to childhood. I need to let go of those feelings. I would if I could. I see the hurt that I caused to the ones I love the most. I see my brother on his wedding day as we celebrate with a toast. I see the good and bad times that I experienced in my life, but it's so hard to let go of all that bitterness and strife. There's a sense of sadness when you look into my eyes, like the ones you see when a close relative dies. But the death is not physical, it has to do with the soul. It's got more to fill me get when that spiritual energy is low. It's like nothing matters anymore, like that day when I was fired, feeling depressed and weak. Can't sleep, but I'm so tired. I'm tired of all the pain, the hurt, and the rain. From that cloud that keeps following me, sometimes I think I'm insane. But when I look out the window and see the beauty of the lake, it reminds me of good times, like when I was nine and things were fine. And with the sunrise, I can feel the presence of the Creator. When I look out my window, I see me and the beauty of nature. I'm a part of God's creation, nature, and humanity. The love and spirit that's in Jesus is also in me. So I learned to love myself and others just for who we are. And I learned all about this love looking out my window with jail bars. And for me, I learned about love in a very unusual place, behind bars in prison. And by practicing meditation, by going within, I was able to see the shame and guilt that often keep people like myself, that people have issues with addiction in that very vicious cycle of addiction. But I was able to move past that shame and guilt and connect to the true ethic of who I am. And I believe the true essence that each and every one of you are. And that essence I'm talking about that unconditional agape love. Now love is more than just a human emotion. I truly do believe that love is our natural state of being. All right, folks. So that's about the end of it. And I'm going to be heading on out. But that was a heck of a cool Father's Day thing right there. Got to spend it with a bunch of very cool and positive people, it seems. Enjoyed it very much. And, uh, <laughs> I, uh, feels pretty good. Anyways, uh, another, another march. I'm telling you, folk, I'm getting my exercise in, all right? <laughs> These are long marches, man. All right, but anyways, don't forget, always forward to the next adventure. Happy Father's Day. The vlog is down.